Of myself quite a bit after the first day, and then yesterday one of my co-workers convinced me that it's a better uh, theme for a better subject for the theme of the conference. Also allows me to be a bit more relaxed. With the other one, I mean, the right very quite a lot. Okay, so I want to. Verbs, that we, in the way we bumped against, uh, against them, <coughs> the, this theory of DMCTs, so there's the motivation. Uh, right, so that comes from the theory of DMCTs. Uh, for so many forms of compact types, so compactness in Poisson geometry. Uh, <coughs> when we start, you start with the Poisson manifold n pi. And it's integrable by some uh, symplectic group of n, g omega over m, on which you can impose all kinds of. Uh, Compactness assumptions, the minimum requirement being properness. So, property. And I'm also going to require most of the time today regular pi. And there is a convenient case. allows one to exhibit what's going on without too much noise in the background, uh, which is that the symplectic leaves are one connected. So if you want to understand what happens, you should always first consider the convenient case, because the picture is clear and it contains everything. <coughs> and here, actually, <coughs> One should be ready to remove the regularity. The regularity can always be removed because there is the desingularization procedure of the type like Grothendieck type resolution in, uh, that sends us back in the regular case. But in the, uh, that will produce some singular leaves, some leaves which are not symplectic. So there is a little singular locus where the regular is dense. But you should be ready to allow Poisson to be a bit less than Poisson. Dirac, Poisson is almost everywhere, but Dirac in principle. But um, those are technicalities. Right, and in, in the process of trying to find examples, you start concentrating on the simplest Poisson manifold, so regular, so this is about symplectic foliations. This M or G is a space of leaves, so the space of symplectic leaves. Uh, <coughs> right, which is Hausdorff because G is proper, and you wonder what B shall I start with? And uh, for that, uh, you have to understand first of all the, the structure that is present on B. And uh, I'm going to explain three structures that show up in on B. So structure one, but is uh, now general. That was just the motivation. So, the first type of uh, structure that are relevant to the story are integral of fine structures. <coughs> on first, let's say, on a manifold B. An arbitrary manifold B. And that can be encoded in various ways. So, it's encoded by 
so it could either could either be a lattice lambda inside TB, so full rank uh, flat, uh, lattice, which is uh, such that any two vector fields which are tangent to lambda commute. Such that so this is like an evolutive condition, any two vectors in G, uh, vectors in lambda commute. Or you can pass to the cotangent bundle, so you have then, and I'm not going to call it lambda star because I'll, I'll start confusing them anyway. So you recognize which lambda is by looking at where it is. Anyway, for today I'll only use the one in T star B. Uh, so lambda in T star B, again a lattice, such that it's locally spent by close one, by exact one forms, it's spent by close one forms, or equivalently, so this is the nicest Lagrangian. So D is a tall over M, over B has the same dimension of P, which is half the dimension of T star B, the right dimension for B in Lagrangian. So the equivalence means in these two is passing to the D or lattice. The other thing you can do is take the quotient of T star B modulo lambda, which because of the Lagrangian condition, you'll have a symplectic form induced from the canonical form there. So you have a torus bundle, so symplectic toru bu torus bundle. So bundle of tori, T lambda, with a form omega T lambda. So that's a torus bundle. Should I put two arrows here? And, like for algebra, no, it gets confusing. So it's a bundle of tori with a symplectic form, which is multiplicative. So it's the simplest type of symplectic groupoid. Symplectic groupoid integrated with a zero Poisson structure. And conversely, if you have a symplectic torus bundle, you can recover the lattice as the kernel of the exponential maps, if you look uh, carefully into that. OK. And then there is the usual definition we chart. That's, uh, of course, the, 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 the thing that you have in mind with the fine charts, but for practical purposes, uh, for us it's, let's take this definition with the lattice, and we are going to use this symplectic torus bundle. Uh, so that's uh, integral of fine structures um, on a manifold B. So let's see how that arises in our motivating example. <coughs> so, example structure one. <coughs> so, the point is that when you have a PMCT like this, it follows, because of the regularity, it follows the isotropy groups. will be compact abelian. Right? With Lie algebra canonically identified with uh, what? With what? With the isotropy uh, Lie algebra for T star M. So this is the kernel of pi sharp at the point X or equivalent to co normal bundle mu star X, the co normal bundle to the symplectic leaf. So, Richard, mm. is it something? I, I, no, I was slightly confused about this any two vectors commute. I didn't quite know what you mean by it, but I think I, I got well, it I now. Have, I have sections of TB, sections, are vector sections, fields. Sections, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. No, I just got slightly okay. confused. I thought mm. lattice always vectors commute. Mm. So, Marius, just to see if I follow it. Uh, the zero Poisson structure is of compact type, even if the manifold is, uh, has a neutral of an structure. Oh. Mm. I mean, there are three structures, and I could spend one hour on talking about each one of the structures with insights like this. I'm going to skip and try to focus on. But here you're also assuming that they are connected, no? Or that you assume one connected and then. What? These isotropic groups. The isotropic groups? 
So G has connected fibers. That's always. Uh -huh. uh, no, I'm not assuming that. You see, that's the convenient case. Uh -huh. When there is, the, that will be the convenient case, and it will be connected. No, in general, there are these compact Abelian Lie groups. So in particular, inside them you, you have the identity component. So you'll see the connectedness, non-connectedness, how it enters in a moment. So you have the identity component, uh, which is going to be a torus now, because it's a connected compact abelian. But abelian follows, I mean the connected, I understand why it's abelian, but the, the group of connected components, why is that abelian? Sorry. Uh -huh. So, not a bit, yeah. so the, the connected yeah. component is a billion. Yeah. Compact, I think it's called almost a billion <laughs> by some. Released by my student Martin Moore, I think. So identity component will be a torus. A torus in that Lie algebra so you will be automatically of type a quotient of the conormal bundle to the sympathetic leaves, modulo a lattice that will be induced by the group OEG. So there's going to be a lattice now. So that's what you get in general. So in the example here, it's in a, what happens in the convenient case. What follows is that uh, uh, B is smooth. So the convenient case implies several nice things, one of them being that B is a smooth manifold. So this uh, lattice lambda HG uh, will sit inside mu star X, but now <coughs> the symplectic leaves are the fibers of the projection, so the conormal bundles canonically identify with the cotangent spaces of B, where B is the base point, so it's projection of X. And that's actually independent of, so only depends on little b. So the resulting lattice in there only depends on little b, therefore you get a lattice uh, lambda inside T star B. And it is satisfied the Lagrangian condition. So you see what you get? It's integral of fine structure on B. <coughs> so that's the first structure that uh, you see appearing on the, on the space of leaves in the convenient case. <coughs> okay, back to structures. So that's uh, structure two. Is that a four default? <coughs> uh, so now I'm going to take a topological space capital B. I hope it's not confusing. I use it in the same letter. Um, so B is a space, topological space. Nice Hausdorff usual conditions, but not with a smooth atlas. So now an orbital or default atlas <coughs> on capital B. There are very ways to organize an or default atlas, but the most elegant and I think also simplest and capturing everything is a proper groupoid B over M. <coughs> so that's a Proper groupoid. And actually, here I have to require it to be proper foliation groupoid. So it's a groupoid with, which integrates the foliation on the manifold, but that can be checked very easily by looking at the isotropic groups. You can take that as definition. The isotropic groups are discrete. So it's a proper foliation groupoid, right? So these have nothing to do with B yet. So together with a map into B, 
uh, open subjective map such that well, the condition is basically this. Uh, it induces an homeomorphism um, from the space of orbits of B and the topological space B. So it's realizing uh, the space B as the orbit space of a proper foliation groupoid in a very precise way, as the map uh, described in advance. And you should really think here, it's the analog of what happens for a smooth part, um, um, structure in B, where here you put the disjoint union of the domains of the charts, and here you put the groupoid of the covering, right? It's silly to do that for a manifold, but for orbifolds, it's so unpleasant to deal with this orbifold charts that it's easier to do it this way, and then there is a little theorem here that Group points like this are locally describing finite group actions on manifolds. So it really captures you. You discover the orbifold atlas in the classical sense. Okay? And then you have a notion of equivalence of atlases. So equivalence of atlases is Morita equivalence. of groupoids fibered over B. I mean, all, everything has maps into B. So you, you take the usual Morita equivalence definition, and everything comes with map into B and commute. So it's over B. <coughs> so with that, at least if you allow groupoids with non-connected S fibers, you can actually, okay. you, can you can always realize atlases which are at all group points, so more like group, finite group actions. Anyway, you have quite a lot of freedom there, and that's important. Okay. So, what about this motivating sample, the Indian 2? Maybe I even have space. Okay, let's try to stay organized. Okay, let's put it here. So, example structure two. <coughs> so, that's not, so I'm leaving the convenient case, so this is in general case. Uh, general in the sense that it's not necessarily convenient. <coughs> You have these identity uh, components which give you a torus bundle uh, T inside G. So you have this uh, torus bundle T inside G, and then in the quotient, <coughs> what do you get? You get a groupoid B, which is G modeled by T, a groupoid over B where you killed all the isotropy, which is Lie type, which is non-discrete, right? You divide it by precisely the identity component. So the contribution is basically from pi zero of the GX, the connecting component of GX, which are pi one of the uh, symplectic leaves. Pi one of the symplectic leaves, that's already an indication of a foliation group point, right? Because you should recognize the holonomy or monodromy groupoid of the foliation. But anyway, it's clear that this is a foliation groupoid. It's also proper because G is proper. So what we see is that we get an orbifold structure on B. Right, so an integral of fine structure in good cases on B and an orbifold structure on B. Uh, Sorry, this curly B is over N not over B. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's never over. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Only the bundle of tori lives over B. <coughs> okay, then uh, <coughs> this is basically just an illustration of how what you have to do. 
of when you give up the convenient condition. It's a, some gymnastics that you have to do to replace whatever is classical in the orbifold setting. So that's uh, maybe a bit boring, sometimes frustrating. Uh, but here in, it's an example of that. So it, it's structured 1, 2, 12. Right? So it's when you combine the two, you are looking at integral of fine structure on orbifolds, or integral of fine orbifolds. Right, in which <coughs> right, there is B, and this will be represented by the integral of fine orbifold structure is represented by pairs uh, B lambda B, where B is an orbifold atlas. And depending where, where, on how nice B is, lambda B can be described a bit nicer or not. So if you use if you use B to be an etal or before the atlas, uh, let's see, it's over uh, P. Let's call it the base in this case. You can always realize that you can always uh, choose an orbifold atlas which is lethal. The annoying thing is that it's not canonical. But if you use that, <coughs> then it's a nice situation because geometric structures on T are acted by B because zeros of B act on the base. So you can talk about just integral of fine structures in the previous sense, so integral of fine structure on the base T, which is B invariant. <coughs> right, so that's how you, you model what happens on the caution. And if you use uh, general B, then you have to think a little bit, but it's, that's about, uh, uh, then you need lambda B to be if right, you have a foliation on M, so it will be a transverse integral of fine structure on M with respect to that foliation. So it's going to be inside the conormal bundle of the foliation F. So this foliation by orbits uh, on M. <coughs> yeah, if B is at all, there's the cotangent bundle, and this is just uh, so You can always choose one of the first type by passing to a transversal of yeah, the... Yeah, you can always uh, do that. <laughs> and the, the, the point is that if I use 1B and I have lambda B, if I change B, lambda will be changed along by the Morita equivalent. So I can represent also the lattice in each chart. So that's, uh, that's uh, very good. That's different than what happens for gerbs. <coughs> uh, if, I, if I, you know, people here go high, I go low. Uh, I think in terms of local chance, the first thing is just telling me that the finite groups that act are acting by integral and transformations, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can really, I mean, if everything is connected, it's really, In the normal direction, integral fine structure, mm -hmm. in the classical sense, invariant under holonomy. It's mm -hmm. really what you'd call transverse mm -hmm. integral fine structure. <coughs> uh, right, so, of course, for example, structure 12 in the motivated example is uh, Well, it's here, right? You have T, which is the, the torus bundle over M, encoding such a lambda. And I have B, and B, yeah, everything fits together. You have to believe me with that. And it's actually trivial to see. 
doesn't make sense to spend more time on that. So we have all the ingredients to, basically what was missing was this language to say that uh, beyond the convenient case, what you have is an integral fine structure, uh, integral of fine orbifold structure. On B. So you see, B already has to be pretty special. So there are things that should, this should be on B. Of course, to build example, it gets a bit, you have to understand more. You have to understand also how these fields interact with the symplectic leaves. But that's another story. It may be very complicated, but I think it's beautiful. Uh, but on B, what we can do is really exhibit, I think, really all the structure that should be there. When we look for examples, at least we know what's the structure on B. And then the next step will be to realize it in cohomology spaces of some leaves. Uh, so that's the ingredient number three, no, the, the structure number three that is used. Uh, on the leaf sprays. So that's, uh, in general, the notion of symplectic germs. <coughs> over an integral of fine orbifold, uh, capital B. I have a given integral of orbifold, uh, capital B. I have an atlas in the back of my mind. Uh, so these germs, first of all, I can tell you what are they represented by. So they are you look at orbifold atlases, so B over M, and orbifold atlas. Um, for B. Right, so you have an orbifold atlas, in particular have a, uh, a lambda b, a lattice in the correct normal bundle, but all together you have a, a torus bundle over M with a transversal symplectic structure. Yeah. <coughs> so that's what an integral of an orbifold structure will give you this torus bundle over domains of orbifold charts, atlases. So you look at orbifold atlases together with uh, an, a central extension uh, of this torus bundle. Maybe I should call it uh, TB to make it clear that it corresponds to B. So this T, B, omega, T, B. Yeah, there are lots of symplectic uh, forms around, so it's ugly to use these notations, but it's safe to write always the index of where your symplectic form is. Otherwise, it can get messy. Uh, going to a symplectic groupoid, sigma omega, so that's a symplectic groupoid and projecting down into this groupoid that serves as an atlas for capital B. So that's uh, what we're looking at. So these are symplectic groupoids. And this, uh, of course, omega restricted to TB, it's uh, the, the form on the, on the torus bundle. <coughs> right, so this is, uh, and maybe I should restrict again to the convenient case. I'll do that very soon. Um, <coughs> So what's the game we're playing here if you think that about usual S1 gerbs? So usual S1 gerbs, 
use here just the circle S1. So the, in this process, first we're replacing S1 by a torus bundle. Could be any torus bundle. So any torus bundle, let's say over manifold B, I can talk about uh, gerbs with that band or whatever. You know, I add symplectic to it. But when adding symplectic, this torus bundle should be endowed with a nice symplectic, well, symplectic-like form, transversally symplectic. And that's precisely what the integral of fine structure does. So it's equivalent. So having this uh, symplectic-like torus bundle is precisely the integral of fine structure on B. But uh, for the rest, it's very similar to S1 bundles. And then so you can talk about just a question? Yeah. Should I understand that curly B, because of the way it's defined as G mod T, should I understand that curly B acts on T and, and that T is equivariant and then you're just lifting it to the total space and that's what the central extension is? Yeah, this is when I go here, right? That's very general. It has nothing to do with that motivation examples, right? Now you're talking about this, yeah, it will be it's the example of or before structure, which was G mod T, right? Yeah, yeah. This is the uh, T on which B will act. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> exactly. Um, so maybe, yeah, let me finish the definition and try to give a few, make a few remarks. So the equivalent, I mean, there, there is an equivalence going around, but or before atlases, the equivalence is just a version of Morita invariant, a version of Morita equivalence. <laughs> of central extensions. Well, for central extensions. I will very soon move to the convenient case, and then it should be uh, clearer. But let me make some remarks first. So I thought, now I hope it's, yeah, I didn't say that. So a verb is an equivalence class to such an extension with respect to Morita equivalence. The, the first remark is good to have in mind, and that's already for classical S1 gerbs, so that's why maybe why it's, the story is a bit more intricated, even for S1 gerbs, the usual ones, uh, extensions cannot be moved uh, along Morita equivalence of Bs. Right? In other words, <laughs> right, for the integral of fine structures on an orbifold, which uh, I raised, <coughs> uh, this lattice or the torus bundle, I see it in any chart. For jerks, not. It's a, it's, it's a chart with an extension, but if I move the chart, if I change the chart, I may not have an extension. So that's what it's good to have in mind. So in particular, even in the smooth case, and that's really, the, it, that's really about the convenient case for us, right? When V is smooth, <coughs> you see, we have to use general orbifold atlases, which when B is smooth, it means what? It will mean you have a submersion from M into B, it will be a submersion groupoid, so i.e. G equals M times over B M as a groupoid over M together with a submersion, well I should start with the submersion. 
projection from M to B. So you first have the submersion and then the group point. But I think it's clear. <coughs> right? So that's why in these S1, in, in these bundle gel pictures of usual germs, you always have these weird submersions and group point around. It's choosing a convenient chart where you can represent the jerk by extensions. <coughs> right? So in that convenient case, uh, the situation is uh, neater. Uh, not all these confusing bundles and actions, like this, just m times uh, over bm. And here is going to be, so this everything over an m. which projects into B, which is smooth. Here I have this, this is an integral of fine manifold. It has this inflective torus bundle that I mentioned before. I hope you can read. And then what you have here is just projection, the pullback, so projection star of TB, which projection star of the form. Right? So if you're confused by this, just think you're in the convenient case. And I'm talking about simplectic jerks over a manifold B, which means a submersion from M to B, together with such an extension of symplectic groupoids. And again, I started with an integral fine manifold. Right? So this uses the integral of fine structure that I started with. So that's given from the integral of fine structure, that's the M, and that's what, what's in between us, the extension. So, so in the back of this extension, there is a little groupoid governing this. So which is the structure of that little groupoid? Homework to relate this with shifted, uh, <laughs> uh, with the shifted point of view. <coughs> Uh, right. So in, in this case, uh, in the motivating case, I mean, that, that comes, uh, that comes, it, it even looks silly, right? It comes for free, uh, because now you just have G, the integrated group OA, and the by construction and extension of G, having this T in the kernel. So it looks silly, but it's not silly if you think that you want to build your manifold. Start with B, and what what are looking for? With the B, which is integral of fine, maybe your default. Then I did a symplectic gerb, which, okay, if I just say symplectic gerb, then it's again a bit silly, but this point of view allows us to encode the up to equivalence the symplectic gerb more algebraically, where these Dixmi Edward D classes. At the end, I'll be looking for a body forward with a given certain homology class on B. So I have to explain that. So what's this Dixmiet what the classes for all before which completely classify Dixmiet what the classes for symplectic germs, which completely classify homologically the germs. Well, it extends the story from the S1 germs with here. So the <coughs> uh, warm up uh, for Dixmier Wadi class, it's <coughs> better to you to look first at uh, uh, the principal bundles, and how they are con uh, classified in this, in this context. Uh, because classically the story with germs is uh, like the next level of principal bundles. Principal S1 bundles are classified by H1 with coefficients in S1 or H2 with coefficients in Z. Germs are classified by one degree higher. So here let's see what's the, the one level lower. So the principal bundles in this picture, so let, let me fix the Uh, 
the setting. So I'm starting with with an integral of fine manifold so over it I have this quotient of T star B by lambda with its symplectic form so principal bundles for this torus bundle this uh, I think there is a standard terminology for that, which is a bit scary, but they are just principal bundles. So these are torsors uh, for this uh, data of a torus bundle. <coughs> so right, uh, the, the analogy, as I said, so in, uh, in the classical picture, you look at principal S1 bundles, uh, P over B, principal S1, and then these are classified by the Kirchhoff class of p, which is in h1 of p with coefficients in s1, which is h2 of p with coefficients in z. <coughs> now the the next level is to replace s1 by a torus bundle. So then you are looking at t b torsors which are uh, uh, bundles, which are again principal bundles, so P over B, but now with the principal action of TB, and this is both the moment map of the action as well as the bundle, uh, no, the moment map of the action as well as the bundle the map, right? So this has to be principal. <coughs> In the, like, like for S1. So in this case, if you play a little bit the game carefully, you see what's, uh, what you'll get, that they are classified by the first chain class, which now lives on the cohomology of, sorry, the base B. Why do I write B? It's always the base, otherwise it would be useless as a classifying object. Uh, <coughs> with coefficients in the sheaf of sections of the torus bundle. Right, so the sheaf of section, which by the exponential sequence involving the cotangent bundle is the same as H2 of B, coefficients in the sheaf of sections of this lattice. <coughs> and then when you go to the symplectic case, you're talking about symplectic TB omega TB torsors. Right. Here, the integral of fine structure was not important at, at all, right? We just needed a torus bundle and not the symplectic form. Now we use the, maybe the integral of fine structure. Yeah, it feels a bit stupid to keep on copying. So now you have a symplectic action. Uh, sometimes capital B, omega, sometimes small. But again, the action is principal and Symplectic. <coughs> so you have a compatibility between those two, which, yeah, multiplicative condition, which says that this is a Hamiltonian space with respect to that symplectic group of it. Sorry, there's a comment by Chen Chang. Yeah. It says so this three class it will make curly B into some maybe two shifted two group of it. Yeah, they started solving the exercise. Very good. <laughs> I'm not going to join that uh, exercise solving, I think. Sorry, no, please, uh, I need to say something, because uh, <laughs> I gave actually a talk a couple of years ago in Brazil, and actually I talked with you three authors, no? Rui, uh, David, and you, that uh, about this thing of seeing the symplectic shapes, no, within the framework of uh, two stacks. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's something that I've been telling you, and you say, oh, this is homework, but it's something I've been working for several months. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 so homework in the I don't think it's nice. Uh, for it. When I was developing the, the, all the paraphernalia of uh, uh, two uh, equivalents of two stacks, etc., one of the motivations, as I gave that talk two years ago, was this. And 
Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. I, I think you misunderstood me. For me, I want to show something on the more on the classical side. So when I say homework, I say I don't want to touch the shifted picture here. Okay. But you know, I'm working on this, no? Yeah, I know. Some I people work quite a few. I yeah. hear quite a few. Also, Enrique told me some interpretations of okay. shifted uh, on these pictures. I, I, I'm aware of that, yeah. Okay. I don't try to neglect that. I'm trying to say something in the time I'm given. Uh, <laughs> so here what you'll have is... Uh, <clears throat> okay, now it gets interesting. Look, what are these classified by? Chair classes, uh, B with coefficient C in... Now that's a symplectic vector bundle. So you can talk about Lagrangian sections. So it's the shift of Lagrangian sections. And if you think about the Hodgkin lakes with uh, forms and something more discrete, that's the second cohomology of B with coefficients in the shift of integral affine functions, whatever that means. Uh, <coughs> I don't want to go into that. In the construction is it's uh, pretty simple. I mean. Such a torsor will be a Lagrangian vibration. You can find locally Lagrangian sections. And when you compare to Lagrangian sections, because it's principle, their difference will be given by a section of TB, which will be Lagrangian. So on the overlap, these local Lagrangian sections will give on the double intersections Lagrangian section of TB. So you'll get a check cycle, one check cycle with coefficients in Lagrangian sections of T. And that's um, that's uh, useful also for the jerk picture because the consequence of that is that <coughs> over compatible basis, so a contractible base. Such sources are always trivial, meaning that they have Lagrangian sections. So sources over a symplectic torsor over contractible base have Lagrangian sections. <laughs> and that plays a role in building this D D class exactly in the same way, in the same spirit. So let me do that. And then I'll be done. <coughs> so I start now. I still have my B, and I start with a jerk represented by something like that. And now I'm going to choose wood cover uh, UI of the base capital B. Uh, so over which, uh, so over each UI, P uh, has sections. P right. being the projection. The projection here has local sections. Uh, <coughs> right. So let's look at the following pictures. I have Sigma sitting over M times over B M, which I'm, I view it as a principal T bundle. T, T being the, <coughs> the pullback. I sit inside X by translation, that's a principal bundle. And here I have the double intersections mapping. So U I interstate U J maps by a section sigma i from U I inverse in M. Uh, sigma i and sigma j. Yeah, that's a sigma i j a section there. <coughs> so I can pull back this as a principal bundle, and I get sigma i j star sigma. So that's going to be a principal T 
E bundle with everything simplectic. Simplectic totals bundling in the way I discussed before. Over a contractible. So it will have a Lagrangian section. So that means here I have a map Gij, so Gij from Ui, interleaved Uj inverse sigma, Lagrangian. making this diagram commutative. So it's arrows from sigma i of to sigma j of. <coughs> and if you look on the triple intersections, <coughs> right, if you look at gij, gjk, gki, you will see it's a cyclic thing, it will land precisely in t. So that will be a map from UI intersect in UJ intersect in UK with values in T. Uh, because these were uh, Lagrangian, these will take value, so the CIJK will be a Lagrangian section. Uh, T omega T over the triple intersection. So you get a check post cycle. So you get an element which is the Dixmier dual in class. We are denoted in C2 of uh, the extension sigma omega. So it's in the second homology class because I use a good, good cover on B with coefficients in the sheet of Lagrangian section. <coughs> And that's the Dixmia Dual D class. <coughs> and it only depends on the equivalence class of the extension. So it depends only on the curve. And then, like for principal bundles, you just show that the curve is trivial in the appropriate sense if and only if this class is zero. So you really, up to equivalence, this classifies completely uh, the curve. I didn't talk about. Uh, the trivial gerb, but the trivial gerb is just C over B, uh, just C over B, taking care of the middle, and then it's T as an identity. Uh, <coughs> but uh, the conclusion is that, right, that all that data in our motivating example is a class in H2 of B, we could change it to a version. So that's the structure we have. That's a rewriting of structure 3. Right, so we need an integral of an or default structure that will give us this torus and a class in, in there. And uh, yeah, it's some interesting examples, but my time is up. I'm going to stop here. Thank you. Questions. I have a first question. Um, do you have any interesting examples <laughs> well? of such a uh, integral alpha orbifold with this choice of class? I'm giving you an opportunity to, uh, you know, say what you wanted to say about that. <coughs> no, I didn't prepare about the examples. Uh, okay. I think one food, I think last week in France, uh, two weeks ago, there was a talk just about one example with leaf space T2. Ah, okay. so, but that was, you see, we give this flexibility, uh, we say minimal condition proper. So with that condition, there are lots of examples, already duals of Lie algebras, and I mean, what you get, it's all defaults like the, the, the maximal torus algebra divided by the Weyl group, many things that you recognize, the, the, the integral lattice that comes from the exponential map, uh, but there is some challenge on the, on the case of when you ask here to be closer to compact, compact. so that, then it gets challenging. So there, you start with finding, you try to find the example in leaf space S1. Uh, all this structure will then have to be there, interacting inside the second cohomology group of the symplectic leaves. And by, we understand 
how it has to interact, and that excludes already many simulating manifolds. So the first uh, example with a rich enough cohomology is the case three, where you also have the Torelli type theorems to realize cohomological things by actual forms. Uh, so the, the, the talk from two weeks ago or so from Lumini was building an example over T2 with respect to any integral of fine structure. They are basically two types. And I think that's a very interesting uh, direction to go into, but you really have to go away from K3. You lack the Torelli theorems, you go to hyperkeller, holomorphic symplectic. Not enough is known for us just to build the examples, but I think it's something exciting going, uh, going on there. Do you think that uh, singular integral affine structures are relevant in any way? Do, do you think that you could have, just because when people study integral affine structures, there's so many other examples that are slightly singular in some way. <coughs> do you think those are relevant to Poisson group work? I mean, to simplify the group work? Um. To this, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there are two things there. I mean, first of all, I think stuff that comes from uh, from uh, Poisson geometry, like these log algebroids and so on, they may turn out to be useful. I mean, making sense of integral fine structure on the algebroid, using the algebroid, may translate it to singular ones on the manifold. I think that's a, an approach that is worth investigating. And then what type of singularities you want to allow depends on which algebraic you plug in, this whatever. Uh, what's here? As the things stand now, I think the answer is no, but there is a little problem here with the condition that G is smooth. I mean, there are examples which deserve the name of compact type, it's just that G is not smooth. You have another group, natural compact groupoid above. So that's the work uh, done uh, by Daniel and their student on integrating the Poisson manifold from the Jacobi per perspective. So very interesting example, a sphere in the dual of a Lie algebra, compact, everything compact. It's not integrable in this sense, but it's integral in the Jacobi sense. So here I have a one-dimensional higher compact groupoid. So it deserves to be called of compact type. Just happens that symplectic groupoid is not smooth. So if you allow this bigger picture, mm -hmm. the answer may be yes. Right? So if you allow also for singular type of <coughs> the answer may be yes, but it's very speculative. Any other questions? I have. So do I understand, let me see if I understand correctly, that any such extension gives rise to a class in H2, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Do you understand the, <coughs> the subspace in there that corresponds to actual symplectic group to, to actual well, extension? There is a theorem which says there is a one, a, a, an isomorphism of groups between symplectic germs and these classes. There is a, something that I'm not saying. In, in there, you're allowed things which are not connected. So to get that one one to one correspondence. When with fibers not connected. It's a bit I mean that's already a, a good question also for uh, or be or for, for usual gerbs, right? When you can represent them by a submersion with connected fibers, right? And th that's really the, the question one should ask. The classes in here which are represented by things where everything is connected. So that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some virtual questions. Yes, there, there's a qu question from Chen Shang whether that cocycles uh, CIJK, uh, since it's a uh, Lagrangian, whether it, whether it makes it uh, uh, lying to some more special H2. With this Lagrangian property somehow. Well, it's in the Lagrangian. And that's it. Okay. It's a special sheaf. It's a special, it's a special sheaf. sheaf. Lagrangian sections. 
because the theorem gives a one-to-one -one correspondence, it is what it is. Uh, I don't think... Uh, I'm just playing change sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other questions?